Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to lecture 2 of our human resource management course. Today, we will dive into the dynamic realm of strategic human resource management, often termed as SHRM. In this session, we will try to explore the important components that make strategic human resource management a crucial and a critical approach to managing the resources of the organization that is the human resources of the organization. In this lecture, we are primarily going to talk about what strategic human resource management is. Then we will proceed towards understanding the importance of aligning human resource management with the organizational goals. After that, we will try to work on introduction to strategic planning, then human resource planning, it will be followed by a small case on strategic human resource management, followed by best practices in aligning HR with the strategic goals and last but not the least we will be touching upon several important aspects related to the common challenges in aligning human resources with strategic goals. So, let us get started. I am sure by the end of this video and this lecture, you all will be very well acquainted with what strategic human resource management is and how it can help in managing the organization's performance. So, let us get started with the definition of strategic human resource management. Strategic human resource management is an approach to managing human resources that emphasizes the integration of various human resource strategies with the organization's overall strategic goals and objectives. It, inv it involves proactive planning and decision making to meet the long term needs of the organization. So, basically it is an approach which is highly instrumental in shaping the organization's success. It is a kind of proactive approach towards planning and decision making so that the organization is able to sustain in the long run. Now, as we navigate through the ever evolving landscape of human resource management, it is very important for us to bear in mind certain important aspects of strategic human resource management, which will not only help us in addressing the current challenges at work but also would be highly instrumental in preparing the organization for future to make sure that the organizations thrive in the long run. So, one of the important aspects of strategic human resource management is alignment. It involves aligning the policies and practices of human resource management with the strategic goals and objectives. I am sure by now you may not be having a sound idea of what are the strategic goals and objectives of the organization. In the subsequent slides, we are going to talk about the various goals and objectives of the organizations and how aligning the HR practices and policies with the strategic goals of human resources and the organizations at large help in 
organizational success. So, alignment is one aspect which lies at the heart of strategic human resource management. It is about ensuring that the practices and policies related to human resource management are not just a pro, you know, they are not just operating in silos, but it is necessary to understand that this aspect will definitely help in seamless integration of the HR policies and practices with the overarching strategic goals of the organization. So, in nutshell you may say HR becomes a very critical driver of success when we align it with the mission, vision and values of the organization. After this, the second important aspect of human resource management, the SHRM relates to proactive approach. As I mentioned a moment back that proactive approach is the key to the success of any organization. Unlike the traditional practices of HR which were into place that reacted to the problem instead of planning it beforehand, SHRM takes a different stance. It takes a proactive stance. It is something which is aimed at ensuring that the necessary methods and interventions happen as the problem before the problem arises instead of helping with those things as and when the problem arises. So, it is basically more of a forward looking approach which aims at anticipating the problems in advance and anticipating the future needs and challenges. By doing so, certainly SHRM helps the organization stay ahead of others and definitely this provides them with a competitive edge over others. By preparing them for the cha changes rather than merely responding to them. So, proactiveness is the key. Next we move to the third aspect of strategic human resource management. The third aspect of strategic human resource management relates to customization. So, when we talk about customization, it is something based on the premise that the organization has to cater to the needs of different sets of people. And also, it is important to understand that each organization is unique. So, SHRM advocates for a customized approach to HR strategy. There is no one size fits all kind of rule which is applicable to every organization. Instead, the strategies, policies and procedures of the organizations have to be specifically tailored and customized required, uh, you know, tailored according to the needs of the organizations, according to the goals of the organization, according to the, you know, the objectives that the organizations want to accomplish. So, this approach, the customization approach ensures that HR initiatives are resonating with the culture of the organization, the objectives of the organization, the vision of the organization and also the mission of the organization. So, all organizations have to think on these lines and they cannot be adapted as it is or they cannot be picked and taken up as it is from other organizations. Uh, policies and practices. Then last but not the least is one very important aspect of strategic human resource management which is about measurable outcomes. So, one key hallmark of SHRM I must say is its commitment to measurable outcomes. It involves defining the key performance indicators and also determining the metrics MET RICS metrics to gauge the impact of the strategies of HR on organization's success. 
So, the idea is to quantify the HR objectives, quantify the HR practices, so that the organizations can make very, very informed decisions and very, very well thought over decisions and continuously improve their human resource management. So, it is about making sure that each of the HR practice, the effectiveness of HR practice is quantified well, so that we have a fair idea of how to measure it. There was a time when the organizations did not realize the importance of quantifying the things. In fact, there was no such mechanism involved and available with the organizations to quantify, but with the advent of time and as the time has progressed, it has been realized that it is important for the organizations to take care of the quantification of the various practices, policies and this will certainly help an organization to develop some concrete objectives and work towards the objectives also. So, in a nutshell, it is basically a very, very holistic approach, a very forward thinking approach and it is about aligning the HR practices with the strategic goals, values, mission of the organization. So, in the subsequent slides, we are going to talk about what vision is, how do we shape it, what all things do we have to bear in mind when it comes to SHRM. So, it is about proactive stance. Next, we move to the importance of aligning human resource management with the organizational goals. So, when we talk about aligning the human resource management with the organizational goals, it is important to understand the importance and the benefits it gets and benefit it bestows to the organization. So, this alignment is more than just a theoretical concept. It is not just about theoretically saying that yes, we are aligning the objectives of the organization with the you know HRM, but it is it is a very, very practical subject and we need to understand it, that it is the key driver for the organization to gain a competitive edge over others. So, let us explore why this alignment is so very critical and what are the tangible benefits that can be brought by means of aligning the human resource management with the organizational goals. So, let us get started with some of the important aspects of it. The very first importance is enhancing the productivity. So, certainly the organizational performance and the productivity of the organization enhances as a result of aligning HRM with the organizational goal. When HR practices and strategies are in sync with the broader strategies and business strategies of the organizations, employees are able to create a very, very collaborative environment and when they work collaborative environment and uh, when the linkage between the employees is very strong, it certainly helps in working towards common objectives. So, the group dynamics have to be taken care of and the alignment creates a sense of purpose and unity within the workforce as well. For instance, let us take talk of an example here. For instance, there is a retail company which is aiming to become the leader in its customer service. So, it aims at becoming the leader in the customer service. Aligning the HR practices might involve a lot of issues related to recruiting the right kind of people in the organization, training the staff as well with exceptional uh, interpersonal skills. So, if the organization starts thinking on these lines by keeping the broad objective of the organization in mind, by keeping in mind the broad goal of the organization in mind, certainly 
it can prove to be highly productive for the organization. So, definitely this ensures that every employee understands their role in the organization in delivering the outstanding customer service which the organization is actually thriving for and ultimately boosting the overall organizational performance. Now, let us talk about a very important and critical link between the alignment and employee engagement. Employees are very well motivated and they feel more engaged with the organization when they see a very clear connection between the roles of the organization and the achievement of the organizational goal. So, understanding the contribution understanding their contribution which further contribute towards the organization's contribution no, sorry understanding how their contribution can really contribute towards the bigger picture or uh, the entire organization at large will help organizations create a better sense of purpose for the individuals also and certainly they will be more motivated towards work. So, when HRM is aligned, people are not just working towards the organizational goals, they are not just working towards the uh, fulfillment of task, rather they are active contributors towards the success of the organization and they are made to realize, if you are making them realize that they are contributing to the success of the organization at large, this will certainly increase the sense of commitment towards the organization and they feel like a stakeholder to the organization it will definitely bring in higher level of job satisfaction among them and consequently would improve the retention rates as well. There are several studies which demonstrate how engaged employees are more likely to stay in the organization for long thereby reducing turnover costs and fostering a very positive and innovative work culture. So, there are n number of things that may come as a result of employee engagement which will be in the form of collaborative workplaces, positive work culture, low absenteeism, low turnover rates among individuals, employee turnover rates would be lessened because of it and many other things would happen as a result of it. Then is adaptability and agility. In today's time, in today's changing business environment, adaptability and agility are very important for the success of the organization. They are really very instrumental for ensuring the survival of the organization and sustain sustenance of the organization in the long run. So, when HR practices are flexible enough and they are responsive to the organization needs. The entire workforce becomes more agile, they become more adaptable to the changes and they quickly respond to the change, changing business needs as well, changing business environment as well. For example, at the time when the industry has to go through some kind of uh, disruptions and maybe if there is some kind of uh, changes uh, happening in the industry also. So, organizations which will be more agile and uh, adaptable would be able to survive, which would mean that the HRM can quickly retrain and deploy its workforce to meet organizational needs as per the needs of the business at large. So, agility allows the organization to navigate different challenges in different walks of life and they are able to make the organization thrive in the long run, thereby seizing the opportunity in the dynamic work space and marketplace. So, this was all about importance of aligning human resource management with the organizational goals. So, I think by now you have a fair understanding of the fact that if we are going to align the human resource management with the organizational goals at large, then certainly the organizations may be more sustainable in the long run because it is something that drives the organization's performance, enhances the employee engagement at work 
and also it facilitates resource allocation in a more effective manner. And it is seen that when HR practices are flexible enough and responsive enough to the organizational goals, organization needs, it becomes easier to adapt to changes in the business environment also. So, as students, as budding HR professionals and organizational leaders, we need to recognize the power of alignment and work towards creating a workplace that is more agile and more adaptable. Certainly, when the HRM is aligned with the organizational goals, it leads to effective utilization of resources. The resources here would mean time, money, efforts, etc. And it is very important to direct them so that they can have a significant impact on the strategic objectives. Let me put across an example in this context. For instance, a technology company which aims to lead in innovative solutions to the people. In this kind of organization, the HR might allocate resources to continuously train their employees by putting the appropriate training programs and workshops for the employees so that they stay abreast of latest technologies. So, this targeted investment would ensure that the resources are channeled into those areas that are of prime importance for the organization's success. So, let us talk about some of the examples of how effective alignment drives the organization's success. So, the very first example is about talent acquisition and retention. So, there is this organization which is basically a technology company. It aims at becoming the leader in innovative solutions to the organization, to the market. So, this technology company aligns its HR strategies with the goal of becoming a mar market leader in artificial intelligence, which the organization wants to really excel at. So, HR actively seeks out AI experts in this area and once they hire them, they also provide them ample of developmental opportunities. So, that the things are in line with the ultimate objectives of the organization. So, this alignment of reaching out to the AI experts, developing the opportunities for people to hone their capabilities in context of artificial intelligence helps the company attract and retain the best of the talent in the sector which is crucial for achieving its strategic goal. Now, the second example in this context is related to the cost reduction. So, the organization aims at reducing its cost. This organization is basically into retail business and it plans to reduce its operating cost by around 10 percent to 18 percent. So, 10 percent to 18 percent. So, HR aligns its strategy by implementing workforce planning and restructuring initiatives. So, it thinks of aligning its HR practices by making sure that the workforce planning is done appropriately 
and also to make sure that the restructuring and also to make sure that the restructuring of the organization is done properly. So, that the redundant kind of uh, workforce may be you know may be removed from the organization and the organization is able to reduce its cost. So, this way by getting into appropriate workforce planning on manpower planning and optimal staffing of the individuals, the organization was able to maintain its objectives or to accomplish its objectives. So, these were, these were uh, two examples of strategic human resource management and how the organization aligns the HR policies and practices with the strategic objectives of the organization and how was it benefited. The third example in this context could be something related to employee development. I am taking all these examples so that you get, get to understand SHRM in a better way. So, let us talk about an educational institution. So, that this educational institution thinks of aligning the HRM with the goal of becoming the center of excellence and to ensure that they become center of excellence for research and innovation which they are actually striving for which they really want to which they are actually aspiring for they design a program that identifies and nurtures the research talent among faculty. So, in order to nurture their talent they think of they think of sending their individuals or uh, employees to several professional development programs to several faculty development programs get into more of collaborations think of getting into more of consultancy kind of uh, businesses through strategic collaborations with the uh, various parties and this way by carefully aligning the HR practices and honing the skills and capabilities of their employees to the next level they were able to achieve their objective and they were able to get the cutting edge over others. So, these were few of the examples pertaining to strategic human resource management. Next, we move to an important aspect which is strategic planning. Now, strategic management is something which is very very important, but then there is an important aspect related to strategic planning that we are going to study. So, let me tell you at the outset that SHRM is an ongoing process, it does not stop at any point of time. It is a process that requires continuous assessment, adaptation to the and adaptation to meet the challenges and to change according to the changes happening in the environment. It is not a one time effort, it is not a one time effort, but a very very dynamic approach towards making sure that the organization attains success in the long run. So, basically by means of it, it is very important for us to understand that SHRM has a critical role to play in the organization. In the previous examples also, you must have seen that organizations were able to accomplish their objectives, their long term objectives by putting the HR practices and policies into place. So, if the organizations want to attain success in the long run as I have been repeating SHRM is the key driver. Now, let us talk about introduction to strategic planning. So, when we talk about strategic planning, it is basically a forward looking process, it is about anticipating the uh, changes which, which will happen and uh, it is about 
organizations to set priorities for themselves. It's about fo focusing on the desired resources. It's about working towards common goals. And definitely, it involves defining the purpose of organizations sustenance. Assessing the situation at a particular point of time, which would mean we need to assess the current situation in hand. And also, of course, we have to chart out the right kind of course of action for the future also. So, it typically includes these steps. Number one, defining the vision. Number two, establishing the mission. Number three, formulating, formulating the strategies. Then is about setting objectives and goals, conducting the analysis, creating the action plans, monitoring and evaluation. So, now we are going to talk about all these points in detail. Let us start with defining the vision. So, organizations have to make it very clear that their vision is clearly defined. This is the first step towards strategic planning. So, vision is basically something that the organization aspires to achieve. What you articulate for your future is what your vision is. And definitely, if you want to paint a compelling picture of how you see success in the long term, it is important for you to have a vision. So, it basically gives you a picture of how your organization would look like or how the success to your organization would look like and therefore, vision is of paramount importance. I will just take the example of Tata Powers here. So, when you talk about the vision of Tata Power, it is about empowering a billion lives. They want to empower a billion lives through sustainable, affordable, and innovative energy solutions. So, you can very well understand Tata Power wants to empower a billion lives through sustainable, affordable, innovative energy solution. This is how they want to see themselves in the long run and this is what they aspire to achieve. So, all organizations have to define their vision statement well in advance, so that they are able to work towards it. After the vision statement is defined, it is important for one organization, it is important for the organizations to bridge the gap between where they are and they, where they want to go and how do they attain it. So, basically, Establishing the mission would serve the purpose. The mission statement actually helps in outlining the organization's core purpose or the purpose that it strives for. So, let us talk about the mission statement of Tata Powers again. One of the mission statements, there are multiple mission statements uh, which Tata Powers ha have, we will talk about a few. The first one is keeping the customer at keeping the customer at the center of of what we do. Then another statement is sustainable growth with a focus on profitability and market leadership. So, these are some of the mission statements of Tata Powers. So, how do they bridge the gap or how, what tells about the purpose of existence of Tata Powers is the very fact that keeping the customers is one of the major motives of the organization. This is the mission of the organization. They do not want to falter at any aspect. They want to keep their employees, as they want to keep their customers really satisfied. They want to uh, keep it at the center of whatever they do. So, they cannot compromise with this. So, this is about establishing the mission statements. After this one major aspect which is again important here, but uh, or you may say uh, this is one of the important uh, aspect of the 
uh, strategic intent of the organization it is the values so the organizations have to define their values also for example again let me take the example of tata powers the value of tata powers can be put in this acronym scale wherein s stands for safety c for care a for agility l for learning and e for ethics after we have broadly defined the vision the mission the values for the organization it's important for us to formulate the strategies the organizations have to formulate the broad approaches and plans for how the organization will achieve its vision and the objectives have to be clearly in line with the various aspects for example the strategies uh you know which will address areas like market positioning right kind of product development or growth for the organization and this is how you adequately think on deciding the right kind of strategies for the organization the organization may have to think on the lines of maybe diversification of the business in order to achieve its ultimate objective of accomplishing its mission and vision it may have to think on the lines of uh, new product development product development or maybe it has to think on the lines of market penetration so the different kind of strategies may be formulated depending upon the needs of the organization as i mentioned there is nothing like one size fits all kind of thing which happens so it's important for us to take care of all these aspects after the goals and objectives have been set the next step is conducting the analysis so when you talk about conducting the analysis this relates to conducting the analysis related to the internal as well as external assessments which will help us in understanding the strengths of the organizations the weaknesses of the organizations the opportunities of the organizations and the threats of the organization so what gives us strength what are the weaknesses how do they how do we how do we have to look at the weaknesses what are the various opportunities that are coming our way and of course the threats that have to be addressed so all these things all this kind of analysis has to be done by making use of various strategies by making use of various policies and plans into practice and this is what we do as a part of conducting analysis and appropriately after that we have to think on creating the action plan so action plan is kind of a blueprint that you create which will help you in breaking down the various objectives into several tasks to allocate the resources and of course to and of course as a part of it you set certain you know timelines also for execution and last but not the least is a very important step called as monitoring and evaluation so when you talk about monitoring and evaluation it has something to do with continuously making a track of keeping a track of the progress of what you have done it's about measuring the performance against the actuals against the objectives against the standards sorry against the um, objectives and you know mapping that the strategies are very well adjusted and action plan as per the action plan so this is about introduction to strategic planning so i think by now you have understood some of the key components of strategic uh, planning for example mission vision values some aspects of swot analysis wherein we try to understand the strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats that come our way then understanding the essence of uh, establishing the right kind of goals for the organization which would mean establishing the smart goals that is specific measurable attainable realistic and time bound goals for the organization so now it's important for us to understand the role of hr in each of these components now how does hr really help and how what kind of role does hr play in each of these components 
in each of the components of strategic planning, certainly HR has a very vital role to play. So, HR is integrating in recruitment, selection, training, development, retaining talent, employee engagement and several other aspects. So, they have to take care of n number of things that aligns with the organization's vision, mission, values, etc. Then HR helps in identifying uh, the various uh, human related uh, strengths and weaknesses during SWOT analysis. So, HR also collaborates with the various departments to set the right kinds of goals to understand what kind of KPIs should be there for the employees working in the organization and of course, they have to work towards developing the right kind of metrics to ensure that the people get the right objectives to work. They also have to uh, continuously track the uh, performance of people. They have to make sure that the performance is managed well within the organization. And one important role that has to be played by HR is supposed to be in terms of the uh, various strategies to ensure that people are rightly engaged at work. They are very well motivated and they are contributing towards the success of the organization at large. Now, by understanding this process and the role of uh, HR in each of uh, the steps associated with you know strategic planning, I think HR professionals can significantly contribute towards the success of the organization and uh, they can really help in understanding the essence of aligning the HR objectives with the strategic objectives and goals of the organization. Next, we move to manpower planning. So, what is manpower planning? Manpower planning is a term which is often referred to in as HR planning or workforce planning. So, HR planning is the process of identifying, assessing and addressing the needs the current and future human resources needs to achieve the organization's objectives. So, HR forecasting is an integral component of HR planning. So, what we need to do is we need to understand what is the requirement of uh, human resources in the organization and then we have to further work towards forecasting the requirements of people in future. So, there are several challenges associated with this kind of phenomena. So, we will talk about the various steps involved in the process and we will try to work towards uh, the various um, you know steps in the process of human resource planning. So, let us begin with the first step. So, in, when we talk about the first step, it is about assessing the current HR capabilities. The very first step towards human resource planning is to understand and assess the current HR capabilities. Now, what does that mean? It means it is important for us to take care of the current uh, workforce and we need to have a kind of, we need to prepare a kind of inventory, an inventory of human resources, an inventory of the skills of people, the capabilities that they possess, the competence level of the individuals. This way we will be able to understand what all skills, capabilities, competencies and also the knowledge base we have at the organization. So, first of all it is essential for us to assess the HR capabilities which the organization currently possesses in terms of its human resources. HR has to assess a lot of factors like number of employees that it has, the kind of skills that it possesses, the kind of knowledge base that individuals have, what kind of experience do they possess, right. And uh, also they have to uh, understand what is the potential for their growth. And of course, we have to analyze a lot of uh, demographic factors as well in this context wherein we would be more concerned about understanding the age of people, the tenure of people, the diversity existing with the, within the organization, so that the organization can take the 
well informed and strategic decisions in the future course of time. So, the idea is to understand the strengths and weaknesses of the current workforce. After understanding the capabilities that the organization has and it possesses, the second step is to identify the HR needs. Here, when we say HR needs or understanding the human resource needs, it would mean we have to understand what is the organization's current HR needs and what would be the future needs of human resources in the organization, which would mean how many people do we have at this point of time, how many people do we have to hire in future course of time and taking into consideration various aspects of the environment that we are operating in, how many people would be needed at some future point of time. So, everything has to be planned very appropriately and very adequately and uh, we cannot just wait for the organizations to respond after thing happens. So, HR has to work closely with different departments to understand the HR needs. For example, there are different departments in the organization, the HR department, the marketing department, the sales department, uh, logistics, etc. So, we have n number of departments, finance department. So, HR has to closely work in coordination with various departments to understand how many people will be required and what kind of capabilities, uh, people with what kind of capabilities would be required at a particular point of time and in future course of time as well. So, this is something which needs to be done, done very meticulously and in a very, very organized and planned manners. So, it is about identifying the HR needs. After identifying the HR needs, we get to know about the organization, I mean we get to know about the number of people who would be required at some future point of time, at this point of time and the kind of capabilities that they should possess. And definitely after we have identified the uh, current HR needs, it is important for us to understand, it is important for us to understand the gap between the number of people who we have at this point of time and who we want to hire in future point of time. So, it is about pinpointing those gap areas and uh, understanding the requirement to meet the organizational goals. Gap analysis also helps understanding, engaging and addressing the deficiencies of workforce in the organization and also the deficiencies in the uh, needs of the organization. For example, if we really want people to be you know trained on certain aspects or we want to develop them in some way or the other, we may definitely be helped by means of conducting such kind of activity. So, it is a very in depth analysis, there are n number of steps required, there are n number of methods which can be employed for understanding the manpower planning and uh, we may employ different methods to do this kind of work. Then we come to importance of uh, manpower planning. When we talk about uh, importance of manpower planning, I think uh, before understanding the importance of forecasting needs, it is very important for us to understand that manpower planning is a very, very important step and has to be dealt with very carefully because it may have to, you know, it might incur a heavy cost on the organization if you are not doing the manpower planning right. And it is the step which is followed by several other procedures and several other things in the future. So, let us talk about the importance of manpower planning. Of course, it helps in growth preparedness, which would mean it helps in preparing for the growth. So, if we have accurate forecasts in hand, it will help the organization prepare itself for expansion and they can uh, hire the team people from outside or maybe they take they can think the decision sorry they can think on the lines of uh, you know honing the skills and capabilities of the existing workforce also so it's not about just hiring the people after doing this kind of analysis you may even think of honing the capabilities of your organization employees or organizational resources the next is succession planning 
Of course, manpower planning helps in some kind of succession planning also. So, it enables succession planning. Succession planning is about identifying the potential leaders and high potential employees who can be really crucial for the top leadership positions or some leadership positions in the organization. So, the usually succession planning is normally done for the people operating at the top le leadership levels. So, uh, the capabilities of few of the people who can be the potential leaders can be developed from within the organization so that the transition is smooth and they can take over as and when required. So, organizations have to necessarily go for such kind of succession planning. After this next thing is adapting to the external changes. Certainly, we can very well adapt to the existing changes, uh, you know we can uh, very well adapt to the external changes, we can adapt to the market shifts, we can even uh, adapt to the advancements or uh, regulatory changes which are coming if we have done the right kind of mind power planning. And last but not the least very important thing is anticipating the skill gap, especially in those industries which are very fast growing and fast changing. This particular thing can do the work and we understand the kind of skills which may be required for the organization to sustain in the long run. Now, one of the probable question which might be you know running in everybody's mind can be how can we go ahead with it, what can be the various tools and techniques which may be employed for ensuring the right kind of manpower planning. So, let me uh, put across a few important tool, tools and techniques which can help in manpower planning in a smooth manner. The very first is trend analysis, we may go for trend analysis, it is about analyzing the historical data present such as uh, what has been the turnover rates, what are the workforce demographics, uh, what has been uh, the past hiring trends. Uh, you know by identifying the trends, by analyzing the trend we can go for future predictions also. So, little bit of statistics is also involved in trend analysis. Then we have something called as scenario planning. This is yet another method which can be used for the purpose, it is called as scenario planning. So, scenario planning is uh, about creating uh, different kinds of scenarios based on the potential events or changes and definitely we have to then analyze how each scenario would affect the HR needs. Uh, one more method I would like to take up would be workforce analytics. These days data analytics has been doing the rounds and it definitely helps the organizations in. Uh, analyzing the large sets of data to make predictions about the future. So, this is about manpower planning, we will quickly take a small case lit by means of which I think you will be able to understand better understand what is it. So, there was this organization company X, it is a mid sized company which has been experiencing rapid growth over a past few years. The objective, the strategic goal of this organization is to become the leader in the industry. And uh, how do they want to achieve that? They want to achieve it by producing innovative and cutting edge solutions. However, the organization is facing certain challenges. Now, what are these challenges? The organization is facing several challenges pertaining to skill gap, the organization is facing certain issues related to employee engagement and retention of employees. And of course, there are some issues pertaining to acquisition also. Now, you have to analyze the situation and have to come up with the appropriate kind of solutions to the problem. By taking into consideration various several factors or several factors that might impact and that might have a bearing on the existing condition of any business, you have to carve the strategies. After understanding the various kinds of strategies that may help in this regard, we may you know you may come up with certain aspects which can really prove to be very very beneficial for the organization. I am just hinting you on certain strategies that can be 
used for various purposes and what should what all should you consider so this particular case is for your reflection the major points that you may take into consideration for addressing such kind of challenges could be how can hr align its recruitment and talent acquisition with the company's strategic objectives then another point that you may take into consideration here can be what hr planning initiatives can be implemented to bridge the gap and of course you may think on the lines of how hr can enhance the employee engagement to better prepare the workforce to work in close coordination with the organization objectives so this is for your reflection and now we move to some of the best practices in aligning hrm with the organizational goals so it's about understanding the organizational objectives hr pro professionals should have a deep understanding of and a very very clear understanding of the organizational objectives at large this kind of knowledge may, may definitely help them in aligning the policies and practices well then strategic workforce planning so the workforce planning or the manpower planning has to be done in a very very strategic manner we may use data analytics to do it and several metrics can also be put into place to make sure that we have the right kind of plan into place then is about implementing succession planning and talent development programs to nurture future leaders so many organizations are even doing this another best practice in aligning hrm with organizational goal can be competency based hiring so you are recruiting and selecting the employees whose competencies match the strategic needs of the organization so you have to uh, ensure that a rigorous and a very very stringent process is followed for the selection of employees then organizations have to think on the lines of devising the appropriate strategies for employee engagement so they have to create a very conducive environment for the people to work in so that they are productive so that they are productive enough their absenteeism is reduced and they are happy delighted and satisfied with the organization so some of the strategies which organizations have been you know working on can be open communication encouragement and uh, developing the skills of the people then is training and development providing continuous training and development opportunities can be the key here to the employees because everybody looks out for the right kind of training platforms to develop and grow themselves professionally and of course organizations have been focusing a lot on performance management and uh, all their kpis are linked with the strategic objectives of the organizations and uh, there are various metrics to uh, figure out or to quantify the data also and uh, last best practice which i have put forth here is in terms of measurement and analytics so using hr analytics and uh, data analytics metrics like things have really uh, helped organizations in ensuring success for themselves so with this we come to the end of our uh, lecture and uh, these are the references which are which are used in the entire lecture preparation so these were the best practices in aligning hrm with the organizational goals and now i would like to quickly conclude whatever we have learned during this session 
I'm sure by now you have a fair understanding of what strategic human resource management is. What are the various aspects of SHRM? What is the importance of SHRM? And what role does it play in shaping the organization's success? We also talked about manpower planning, which is really instrumental in taking all necessary steps related to HR processes. We tried to understand some aspects related to the various techniques that can be employed for ensuring manpower planning and also talked about certain best practices in aligning the HRM with organizational goals. With this, we come to the uh, end of lecture 2 and these are several references that have been used in the preparation. Thank you so much. Thank you.